live on uh, live on Facebook. Hey, happy hump day, Facebook. Um, Instagram. Did we go live yet on Instagram? Here we go. This is going to be a good one today. Facebook, um, if you are, what's up, Instagram? This is going to be a good one today. This is, uh, this is a class that changed my life about eight years ago. Um, I'm just loading this right now because I want to load the slide deck so we can jump right into this. Um, consumer debt. This is the, the timing of this couldn't be, in my opinion, the timing of chapter five. So this is chapter five of my modern money class. Uh, the timing of this as we are flirting with, right? Flirting with a recession, massive inflation, money is tight. 76% uh, of all Americans, get this, I just read this stat the other day, 76% of all Americans living paycheck to paycheck. Brutal. Uh, the reason why I made this class is my podcast, The Happy Homeowner, I talk about some really disturbing statistics that the majority of Americans have nothing saved for retirement. Three quarters of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. Uh, another stat that just shy of 80% of Americans don't even like their job. There's no, that's, that's not a way to live. And so the reason why I bring you this information, especially for young adults, is so that young adults don't fall into the trap that a lot of Americans have fallen into at this point in their life. But I believe that we can do something about this. And this is called financial literacy. Week five, we're going to talk about consumer debt. We're going to talk about budgeting. And we're going to talk about money management. So before I start, I want to make sure everyone knows, here's a disclaimer. I am a mortgage professional. I am not a financial planner. I'm not going to give any financial. I will not give any advice. So if you hear me give something that sounds like advice, it is not financial advice. This is stuff, fundamentals that I have learned personally and stuff that I do in my life. And it's just my experience. It's what I'm doing, but it's not financial advice. I want to save my job as a mortgage professional, not get any trouble. So there's a disclaimer there. As a mortgage professional, my MLO number is MLO number 115349. My compliance department said I had to start giving this information out at the beginning. So let's go ahead and get started. So I think the most important thing right now to understand about consumer debt is we, I've seen statistics come out recently that shows that America is racking up debt, credit card debt, consumer debt at all time levels. Maybe because they're short on cash, most likely because things are getting uh, more and more expensive, but nonetheless, that's mismanagement of debt. So for young adults, starting out, what is consumer debt? If you go back, let's go back over the last, let's just do a review over the last four weeks. Last week, we talked about credit scoring. We've spent a lot of times and a lot of time in weeks one through three talking about the psychology of money, understanding how money works, okay? Uh, understanding inflation and how the, the government and the Fed controls money in and out of America. And so right now, we're going through one of those cycles where Inflation levels are at historic highs, okay? So the cost of goods is higher than it's been in a long time. So $1,000 at Costco is buying 30% less food or more than it did a year ago. That's the easiest way to explain inflation. Now, the cool thing about this, unless you live in certain parts of the, uh, parts of the world, inflation in America is very, it's, it's monitored. So what the Fed is doing right now is the Fed is raising the Fed funds rate to push down inflation levels. And once inflation levels come back down, you're going to see your money go a little bit further at Costco, for example. And so I think it's really important to understand kind of the idea around money, inflation, why we're here in October of 2020, and we're seeing inflation levels high, and we're seeing higher than ever, and we're seeing consumer debt spending, credit higher than ever. And so a lot of Americans are racking up credit cards. They're maxing out credit cards. And what you need to understand with consumer debt is it's not free. Youngsters, Allie, my daughter, who's 16, she, we've given her a credit card. We pay off the credit card every single month. But if you weren't to pay off that credit card, there's a high interest charge or a finance charge attached to using credit. And that's the problem American is, America is falling into right now. And so 
What I wanted to do right now is I want to share this with you. Last week, my screen sharing feature was not working properly. So hopefully, if you're on Facebook Live and Zoom right now, you're seeing, um, you're seeing my screen. So from a consumer debt standpoint, I love this quote. I think I found this quote. I found this quote, I believe, from Dave Ramsey. Um, and, 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 you know, and Dave, Dave Ramsey is notorious for calling a spade a spade. So Dave Ramsey calls, says spending more than you make is just losing in advance. And it's, it's really the truth. So when it comes to spending more than you have, if you don't have the money like America right now, guess what? What do you do? You put it on a credit card. Okay. And that's what Americans are doing right now is they're putting, charges, spending money, buying things that they don't have the money to make, or excuse me, the money to spend more than they're making and they're charging things. So they're spending more than they make. It's losing in advance because of the credit charge, the credit, the finance charges that are attached to that. So what do most young people do? I, this is important to understand. Most young people max out their first credit card to buy things they can't afford, and they end up spending the rest of their lives. So what they do is they develop poor habits at an early age, maybe because mom and dad were doing it. But they end up spending the rest of their lives full of debt, paying extra in interest and late fees. And so remember the other day I was talking about, or it was like, I think it was week three, I was talking about money math. The definition of money math, which I absolutely love, is being able to calculate the future cost of today's financial decisions. Do I buy that new car? Do I buy a used car? Um, do I buy that sweatshirt when I really don't need it? Uh, do I buy those that, that purse, that luxury purse, that name brand purse when I really don't need it? Being able to calculate the future costs of today's decisions is money math. And it's one thing that I wish I would have learned sooner. The other thing that I wish I would have learned sooner is the man in the car paradox. This comes from the book, The Psychology of Money, the man in the car paradox. No one is impressed with your stuff as much as you are, right? So we think that we've got to buy something or do something to impress the Joneses, to impress our friends. The man in the car paradox says otherwise. And I can tell you at 47, it's just not that. It's just not that case. So let's jump into what I think. Now that you understand consumer debt, consumer debt is not complicated. Don't spend more than you make. If you can't pay off your credit card every single month, don't do it. I've got two or three tips here. Opposite of what Mr. Dave Ramsey might believe in. I do like credit cards. I like credit cards for a reason. Number one, they build your credit. Number two, we get a lot of free stuff because of the amount of money that we spend raising a family on sports, on Costco, on my wife's business. So you get points back sometimes when you use a credit card. And so here are a couple of tips relative to consumer debt that I'll share with you. You can use consumer debt to buy assets. Okay, an asset is something that'll go up in value to earn money or rewards. Pay bills with those, but you got to pay that consumer debt off, that credit card off every single month. Another thing with consumer debt is look for credit cards that have low or no annual fees. Okay. Look for credit card companies. If you have a credit card right now and it's maxed out, try to do, or if you have a high balance on it, you're having a hard time paying off, maybe transfer that to open up a new credit card that has a 0% balance transfer for 12 months. That might help you get ahead on paying that thing off, okay? Um, I think those are a couple of tips. I, I, I get in this argument all the time with people, like, do you believe that, that credit card credit cards are good or bad? I believe that, that used properly, they're good. Um, I think used properly, they're good, and they can be used as a tool to help you um, earn more money. So what is budgeting? This is something that I know it sounds boring. Stick with me on this, especially if you're here on Facebook and you're going to see what I'm about ready to share. Um, if you're on Instagram, you can run over to my Facebook tonight. This is obviously it's live. It's recorded. You can see everything I'm talking about. I have a spreadsheet here that I'm going to go over and I have a link to a page that I'm going to share with you. Budgeting is tracking, simply put, tracking what comes in every single month and what goes out every single month and then really managing and tracking what's left over. So, if you make a salary 
if you have set money coming in every single month, so you pretty much know what you're going to earn every single month and you have set expenses, that number is going to be pretty easy. Okay. What you want to do is you want to, you want to watch that number. What is left over every single month? You want to watch that increase. Okay. That's so important because what you do with what's left over, we'll talk about it at the very end today is even more important. I believe in a rule. It's the 50, 30, 20 rule. When I learned this eight years ago and my wife and I started practicing this, that we pay ourselves first at the end of every single month, 20% of the money that we earn goes into investments. 20% of the money that we earn automatically is, is invested. It's sent to our financial planner and it's invested. Okay. You want to retire rich. You want to retire well off, invest 20% of your income. Okay. So I'm working backwards from this. So the 50, 30, 20 rule is 20% you invest 30% is for your wants. It's for your uh, mortgage, or excuse me, it's for your auto loans. It's for vacationing. Uh, it's for your credit cards. Now, 50% of what you earn should go toward living. That's feeding your family. That's utilities. And that is your mortgage or rent payments. Okay. So the 50, 30, 20 rule is a really great rule to subscribe to. Now, here's a hack. I'm going to share this hack with you. You're going to get to a point in your life as a youngster, this is, this is like, these are like financial goals right now. This is a, a point what you should shoot for. This started happening to me about five or six years ago, where you start to flip, where you start to flip the 30 and the 20 portion of this formula. So you're now able to save and invest 30% of your income, because here's the thing, your expenses should actually go down as you age. You say this again, your expenses should go down as you age. So for, a, for, for an example, we have a mortgage, we have no debt, and I bought Jenny a car last year and it was a really, really low rate. So I put a bunch of money down and we financed a bunch of it, okay? So we have an auto loan at a very low rate and we have a mortgage. Outside of that, we're debt-free, okay? So I have fixed living expenses. Then I've got food, you know, going out with my wife, kids, all these little things, uh, emergency fund, things that can happen every single month. So 50% of our income is not necessary for living. In fact, 20%-ish of our income allows us now to cover our living expenses. And we've completely flipped this rule. So as you grow your income, which is employment income goals, as you grow your income and reduce your debt, you can flip this rule. And now more money is going toward investing. Okay. There's a big difference between youngsters and even adults don't even get this. It blows my mind. Even my wife, we were, we were talking about this the other day because we're losing some money in the stock market, all right? And she was like, let's just keep our money in, in the bank. Let's just keep our money in, our, in the bank. So if you put your money in the bank, there's a difference between saving and investing. We, over the last two or three years, were getting a 22 to 30% return on our money in the stock market. Had we left that money in our savings account, we would have got a 0.01% return on that money. So although you can see it on a statement in your savings account, when I give it away to our financial planner every single month, my wife sees that money leaving our savings account or our checking account going to someone. It's going to an investment vehicle. It's going to an investor. And so there's a big difference between Saving your money in a checking and savings account is giving very little return or none, not even keeping up with inflation or investing it. Now you have to understand if you invest in the S&P 500, this is where I'm saying I'm not giving financial advice. But if you look at the numbers, the rate of return on the S&P 500 over the last 30 or 40 years, there's a really good return, eight to 10%. So you put your money in the S&P 500, you put your money in the stock market, you're gonna get a return. You put your money in the checking and savings account, 0.01, it's brutal. Here's a couple more tips on budgeting. Automate your investing. So every single month, Jenny and I don't wire, we don't initiate a transfer. X number of dollars a month is sent to our financial planner every single month. It's automated. Okay, set the number, automate it, live with the rest. I think it's really important that you have an emergency fund. So I'm going to show you how to build or how to determine what you need for an emergency fund. But an emergency fund is basically three to six months of your total living expenses put into a savings account, a money market account that you can access, but you don't unless it's an emergency. Three to six months of living expenses saved up. 
the biggest hack of them all. And youngsters out there listening to this, young adults listening to this, even adults right now, as we head into this economy, find a way to make more money. All of us have unique talents. Sell that talent. Have a side hustle. Um, if you work for an employer that will offer you overtime or picking up other shifts, there is value. In fact, there's a chapter that I'm going to be teaching down the road in this modern money class on how to make more money. Find a way to make more money. That's a huge hack when it comes to budgeting, paying off debt, et cetera. So here's a free gift for me, budgetwithdan.com. I've spent a lot of time, a lot of time, and I'm going to exit this real quick on, on Facebook and on Zoom. I've spent a lot of time building this class out. Um, super, super, super proud of this. Um, or excuse me, this isn't a class. This is a page. But I'm super proud of this because as I share this with you, I'm going to share a couple of the features and the reason why I'm going to actually teach the rest of this lesson from this page. So what you're going to find is budgetwithdan.com. What you're going to find is you're going to find about a 10 minute video where I teach the six steps to wealth. I teach this budgeting class, kind of an extension of what I'm showing you today. And then I give you some forms here to download um, how to determine how much money you need for retirement. Um, your wealth awareness questionnaire. This will blow your mind. So this is a 15 question test. It's a financial awareness test. 15 questions, yes or no. It's yes or no, there's no maybe. Um, do I fill out a budget for my family every single month? Yes or no. You can download my personal family budget form that I'm gonna show you in a second right here at budgetwithdan.com. Number two, am I debt-free with the exception of my mortgage? Number three, do I have three months reserves, survival number or emergency count saved up? Number four, do I save 20% of my income? Number five, do I have a cash net worth greater than a million dollars? <throat> Number six, do I own a home? Number seven, I have at least $1 million equity in real estate, okay? Number eight, I own a rental home that cash flows every single month. Number nine, I carry three to five times my annual income in life insurance. So you guys, you can see, am I investing in my 401k? Do I have a credit score over 760? Do I donate money or tithe greater than 5% of my income? Do I read one personal development book a month? So this is, the, this is the roadmap. This financial awareness annual test is the roadmap to becoming wealthy. Young adults, I wish this was given to me at 20 years of age. Probably wouldn't have gone and got a master's degree right there, that guy right there on the wall that I don't use <laughs> in sports medicine, kinesiology. Um, I would have gone into business and I would, have, I would have learned how to go out and make more money. I would have surrounded myself with mentors. I would have started investing and budgeting and working on my credit score a lot earlier than I did. So you guys, as young adults, take this. The goal with this, whether you're a young adult or an adult, the goal with this financial awareness test that I give to my clients is once a year, every year, try to turn a no into a yes. Okay. Every year, try to turn a no into a yes. Now, if you really want to, you know, really put this thing on steroids, if you will, try to do this every six months and every year, try to turn two no's into two yeses. All right. The second page of this packet is how much money do I need to retire? This is a big question. A lot of financial planners even mess this up. They confuse it. So I give you a formula on how to determine how much money you need to retire. Really, really simple. You just plug in numbers. And then the last is this personal family budget form that I was talking about. Now, this one's really, it's fairly difficult for you to see. Um, it's fairly difficult for you to see right here, but I'm going to see if I can save this and bring it up since I'm sharing it, and then I'll blow it up. Because I want to go over this with you. I think this is just super, super, super help, helpful. Um, give me one moment. Okay, you guys get to see my really ugly, messy desktop on Facebook Live. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to blow this up just a little for Zoom. This is my personal family budget form. Instagram, if you go to budgetwithdan.com, you can download this, exactly what I'm talking about, and watch this after I uh, get off a of live. Column number one is the name of all your bills. Column number two is the minimum monthly owed on each one of those bills. Column number three is the total monthly payment. So let's say your auto loan is $485 a month, but you pay $700 a month. So column number three is what you actually paid 
on that debt account. Column number four is the amount of money you saved every month. And column number five are your paychecks that are deposited, okay? So you put your spouse's pay, your pay, for example, on this one. It's what gets deposited into your bank account, okay? So let me go back here. Now I'm going to, there we go. I had to update our screen share. Here we go. We, we made this mistake last week. Personal family budget form. So column number one, name of bills. Number two, monthly, minimum monthly owed. Number three, monthly, total monthly paid. Number four, amount saved. Number five, total paychecks. Again, you can download this at budgetwithdan.com. So column number five is, so this particular family makes $13,700. They deposit $13,700 every single month. The reason why column number three right here, which is the amount of money they pay every single month, matches 13700 what they earn and deposit every single month is because I want to see what's left over. After they pay their bills of $6,218, they have $4,832 left over every single month. So I add that to a line item, add these up, and now I come up with 13700 So you want to make sure that all of your earnings all of your deposits every single month are accounted for. This is month uh, number four is how much money we saved every single month. So this particular client saved $6,832 of their $13,700 that they deposited. So look down here, I circle this. The percent money that they saved each month was 49%. Let's go back to that 50, 30, 20 rule. See what I'm saying? They're flipping it. They needed to save 20. They saved almost 50%. That's incredible. So down here, what we're doing is we're keeping track of their 401k balance, mutual fund balance, stock market balance, equity in the home, equity and rentals. So you're keeping, you're watching this go up every single month or down, depending on the market. And then you're keeping track of your cash net worth, total net worth, giving year to date. So this form, super simple. Jenny and I fill it out every single month, every single month. It's a, I think it's great for marriage counseling. I think it's great for, um, one, it's great for, for planning too. You're planning your future, but you're keeping track of what's coming in every single month, okay? What is going out every single month and what's left over. And you're given what's left over a job. So I am not a financial planner. I have a really good idea of what to do with, left, with what's left over every single month. But if you need an introduction to a great financial planner, I'm happy to make an introduction there. I tell the base advice that I give a lot of my clients is you can do a lot of this on your own, what financial planners do on your own without someone charging you until you have a quarter of a million or $500,000 cash net worth. At that point, I think it's good to have someone kind of overseeing the decisions you're making with your money, but I don't think you can go wrong. Again, not financial advice. Anyone can invest in the S&P 500 index. I don't think you can go wrong doing that, but I would encourage you to meet with a financial planner because a good financial planner will give you a plan and they'll help you kind of build out that plan or carry out that plan uh, over the lifetime. And, and this has to do with life insurance. This has to do with uh, an estate and a will. We'll get to all that down the road. But going back, let's wrap up with, with today's lesson. I want to I wanna close with um, a couple of real quick tips. I'm going to pull up our slide deck one more time. Almost done here, you guys. The, um, in fact, actually I'm not. The personal family budget. Uh, I just had a question come in on a comment. The personal family budget can be found at budgetwithdan.com. Budgetwithdan.com. You could download the, the wealth test, the wealth awareness, the annual wealth awareness test, how much money do I need to retire and the form. Um, if you want to reach out to me, you can reach out to me. My email's on that form. I can give you the Excel spreadsheet that I use and it's got all 12 months on it. And so the numbers carry over every single month relative to your net worth. If you have any questions on this stuff, I teach this to our clients. So once or twice a year, I'll teach a budgeting class for my clients. Uh, been doing them virtually. What I'll do moving forward is we will uh, most likely have them at a venue. I call them wine and wisdom. So it's another perk of being a client of mine. It's more than just a mortgage. Like I said earlier, I'm a mortgage professional. I'm looking at credit reports, tax returns, pay stubs, bank statements. I think it's silly 
if you are a mortgage professional or you're a realtor and you're not working with a mortgage professional that cares about your client's money. I care about my client's money. I care about your money. So if you have any questions, reach out to me and I'll close with this. This is week number five. We've got 25 weeks of this. This is going to be great. I'm trying to keep these short. Uh, I fund mortgages for a living. If you have anyone, if you know of anyone that has any questions relative to buying real estate um, or mortgage related questions, I want to be your mortgage guy. I want to be a resource to you. I hope this information was helpful. And I'll close with this. If you found this valuable, share it with someone that it may help. Okay. Happy hump day. Have a great rest of the week. Reach out to me if you have any questions. I'm always here to help.